Hi, I'm Paul Seal from Codeshare.co.uk. Welcome to this, the sixth episode in this series where I show you how to build an e-commerce site in Umbraco V8 using Vendor. And in this episode, what I'm going to do is show you how we can get PayPal set up. And we're going to get it set up in a uh, sandbox environment so we can test it out from end to end. And then uh, when you're ready to go live, the process will be the same, but you instead of using instead of using a sandbox environment, you'd use the live environment. So this is going to show you how to get this set up anyway. So first thing we've got to do is we've got to go into our clean starter kit on Braco. We've got to log in here and we need to add the payment method. So I'm logging into Umbraco, going into settings, and we've got vendor, stores, clean shop, and then payment methods. And we want to add a new one. Now, at the moment, we can only add invoicing because we don't have it installed. So we need to go to um, Package Manager console, uh, NuGet Package Manager, and we need to manage packages for solution. And this is where we need to find it. So this is going to be vendor. PayPal. Let's just search for vendor PayPal or PayPal. Oh, that was installed where we want to do vendor PayPal on the browse part. I can't spell PayPal today. So vendor payment providers PayPal. And this one, let's just check what vendor core it needs so it needs anything greater than 1.0 so that's fine so what we'll do is we'll install this into the web project so it's worked out what dependencies it wants to include so just click on ok right now to do a, i like to do a clean solution and then a rebuild solution And once that is succeeded, so we'll just have a look at the output window. Re rebuild all succeeded. Now we can refresh this. Now, if we go to create payment method, we've got the option for the PayPal one. So we've added this, and I'm just going to call it PayPal. And the SKU, the SKU doesn't really matter. That's up to us what we want the SKU to be. So I'm just going to call it. 5009. Um, apparently, I, I checked with that. The, uh, the SKU isn't really important for vendor. Vendor's not that bothered about this. Default pricing um, is going to be zero. There's no charge. We're not charging for using PayPal. Do we want an image for PayPal? Um, we can. <laughs> so the PayPal checkout one time. So the continue URL. So let me just see what I had in my test site. So we want to go to the checkout order confirmation. So this is the page that it comes back to when you finish the payment on PayPal. The cancel URL, we want that to go back to the cart. The error URL, again, cart. Then here we're going to put some um, details in from the uh, PayPal sandbox. And we'll do that after we've set this up. We want to capture payments. We want it to be in sandbox mode. And we can allow canceling payments, allow capturing payments and allow refunds. And it's available in all. Save that. So for now, we don't have any sandbox client details or anything like that. So what we need to do is we need to go to um, PayPal at uh, developer.paypal.com. So let's say that I've uh, logged in. So I'm, if I log into dashboard on here, um, so then that's me on this one. I'm just going to drag this screen over because I have actually uh, logged in. So I've got my Megan Tom Thomas Lashes one. So you've got this toggle here of between sandbox and live. So at the moment, sandbox is selected. So let's create an app. So we've logged into the dashboard. Now let's create an app and we're going to call it clean shop. 
and the business account we want to use. So, yeah, um, when you create a, san a developer account and you get some sandbox details, so we're just going to say we use that create. Now, um, what we've got here is this the client ID, and we'll have a secret as well. Now, this is for a sandbox one, so I'm well. I'll put it in, but I'll I won't show you what I put in that in that there. Now, when we go back into um, Umbraco and we go into the settings here, we paste the client ID in, and then we want to get the secret. So I'll just do that off screen. I'm going to copy my secret and I'm going to paste it in there. I'm going to hide it while I paste it. <laughs> you might see some of it when it comes back on the screen. But you're not seeing all of it, so that's OK. And then it wants a sandbox webhook ID. Now, in order to get that, we need to create a webhook. So within our clean shop application that we've created, we want to create a webhook. So if we go to add webhook. And the URL that it needs to fire back to is going to be um, cleanshop.localtest.me. And then it's going to be forward slash umbraco. And then it's going to be vendor. Then it wants to, to be payment. And then it's callback. So this has all been set up like this. And then the callback that we're going to be calling is payment PayPal checkout one time. And then after that, what we need to do is we need to put in the ID, um, the GUID of the um, PayPal that we've set up in Umbraco. So you know how we have this PayPal um, payment method. We need this ID here. This full GUID needs to go into that URL that we're setting up here. And also what we need to do is check out order approved. That's the only thing that we need to tick on this list. And then we can go down to the bottom and we can press save. So that's all well and good, but actually what we're going to have a problem here because um, PayPal won't be able to visit this URL because PayPal can't get to that because that's on my local machine. So there is a way to make it so that anyone external can actually view what's on your local machine. And that will be by using ngrok. So let me show you ngrok. So if you go to ngrok.com, you probably you may already know about this. If you don't, then uh, carry on. If you do, you could possibly skip past this part. So ngrok is good because what it does is it allows you to have a random ngrok address, which actually is a tunnel through to your local machine, meaning that this callback from PayPal can actually call back to your local application. So it means that you can test this process end to end as if it was really being taken from PayPal, the payment, and it calls back to say order approved. So that's what we're going to do. So we need to, um, you sign up for it. And once you signed up, you, um, you download. So you'll be able to download it. So there's an option to download for Windows over here. So you can, Download for Windows. And once you've done that, what, what I did was I unzipped it and I put it in this folder. So if I go to my computer, so if I go to C drive users, and then in my user, I put mine in here. So C drive users, my user, and then here. So, and you just put the application in here. So it's just an executable. And once we have this executable in place here, what we can then do is we can run in the command line. So I could just get to the command line from here like this, do CMD. 
And now I need to run a command to tell ngrok that I want it to tunnel through to my local site. And because I'm using the local test.me address, the way I do that is like this. I should be able to just do ngrok and then HTTP and then I put the address in. So this is going to be clean. Now, I think I need to make sure what my URL address. Yeah, so it's clean hyphen shop. So you might have noticed that I made a mistake previously, but we can uh, with the webhook URL so we can update that. So clean hyphen shop dot local test dot me. And then press enter. And what it's done is created a random one there. So now the URL that I can people from outside and if I leave this on while you watch this video, you should be able to um, see that what you should be able to visit my address if my computer's on and I leave this in that in running, but I probably won't. It's not a good idea to let people tunnel through. But at the moment it says not found. So you think, well, that didn't work. Well, it did work. We just need to add the domain to the website. So if we go to bindings on clean shop in here, and what we need to do is add this binding for HTTPS to this site. And choose the same SSL certificate that we were using before. Click on OK. And close. Now, if we try and go to this address, we should see that it actually resolves and it renders the website for us. There we go. So it is rendering that website. And you, if you don't believe that it's working, what you could do is you could make sure you're on 4G on your mobile or, you know, mobile data and visit that URL on your mobile. And so that you're not on the local network or anything like that. You're not on your local machine and you'll see that it will render that site. So that's how you can get it to um, point to your website locally. So now that we've got it pointing to the website locally, what we need to do is actually copy this URL. We need to go back into the PayPal dashboard. We need to edit this webhook URL. And instead of it being cleanshop.localtest.me, what we want it to be is we want it to be the ngrok address.io. And then after that is the slash umbraco vendor payment callback, PayPal checkout one time, etc. And that is the path through to there. So now we can go down to here, we can click on save. So now we have this and um, what we need to do is grab this webhook ID and we need to put this into vendor. So if I just find the right window. So it's asking for the webhook ID there. So now I've got my secret, my client ID, my secret and my webhook ID and I've got it set to be sandbox mode. So I can press save on this. So now we should be in theory, we should be all set up to be able to take a payment and go through PayPal and do that. So let's go to the front end of the site. We go to the cart and we've got something in the cart. So let's go to checkout. Put in some test details as usual. And then the PayPal, uh, the payment method we're going to choose is PayPal. Continue to review order. I agree and accept the terms. Continue to process payment. Now it's gone off to sandbox.paypal.com. So that's a good sign to start with. So already it's going off there. So that's okay. Um, that's not the bit that we're concerned about. Now it knows that I'm logged in as John Doe. So um, what we need to do is I just need to explain this bit to you as well, because you might not have known about this. So 
when you've got a, a sandbox account, you can go, you, you've got some sandbox. If you go into your PayPal dashboard, you've got some sandbox accounts here and you can use some of these um, and you can get the password. So you can get your password for each of these accounts by going into accounts like that and then you click through and you can actually get your password. So I've logged in with one of these. So that was by, from the dashboard sandbox accounts and that will give me one of those. So now, and then it thinks that I'm logged in as John Doe. It's always got a balance for me. And if you're not sure, if you're worried that you're going to take money out of your account, just check you're on sandbox.paypal.com. So it will be OK. So I'm going to do uh, pay now. So it's processing. And again, we'd still get to this point here, even if we haven't set it up correctly. So what it's done is it's come back to check out order confirmation. So that's good because that was what we told it to come back to there. And so to the customer, they think they've paid. So the other way to just make sure that you actually have paid is to get the notification back from uh, to get the notification back from PayPal. And the way we do that is we can have a look to see in the commerce section orders and we'll see if an order has gone through. Now we don't have anything yet. So for some reason, it, the callback hasn't actually, uh, it either hasn't come back to um, our web, our app yet. Oh, here we go. It has now. So it has actually come back. So PayPal in the meantime has sent that through and they have actually taken the payment. Okay, so that's it for this video, showing you how to get set up with PayPal and Vendor and how to use Ngrok to allow the PayPal notification to go all the way through to your local machine. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please click on like and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to doing another video in this series. And the next one might be about how we do order notifications. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.